Hi everyone and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench we have a very special watch, a very old Omega from the 20s, from 1925 actually. So this uh, watch is almost 100 years old, yeah? That's quite unbelievable. And you see the condition of this watch is, is a bit rough. It's uh, not bad, it's actually it's not working. Um, so let's see what we can do on this watch to try to restore it and uh, make it work again. So first we are going to open this case. It's a, a silver a silver case, you can see inside the marking 0 0.925 silver, the Omega logo as well as serial number. And you can see inside this beautiful movement from Omega. And now we talk about it a bit more in detail. And there is one thing on this movement which is quite special. And actually, I think it's the first one we see it on a channel. And uh, it's actually it's this balance wheel, which is, uh, yeah, special. Like I said, I will explain it a bit more a bit later in a video. Uh, but you see the movement is not running. It's, it's jam. Um, I don't know. Yes, yeah, balance wheel looks like it's working a bit, but I don't know if it's uh, the balance cock, which is not fully in place, or if the balance staff is broken. We're going to see that later. And uh, look at the dial. Yeah, this dial is uh, yeah, it's a bit rough, but actually it's not, not in a bad shape. Just going to remove the hands. There we go. Using my hand... Uh, removal tool there you can see in the description as well I put some of the tools that I use in a video and obviously if you um, have more questions about the tools that I use or any other question regarding my video don't hesitate to put the comment down below in the description and I will be more than happy to reply to, to your comment okay so now we're gonna release the movement from the case just remove the screws there and the winding stem and there we go it's, it's coming from the front this, uh, this movement and that's it we have the dial and the movement fully released from uh, from the case. Just gonna separate now this this dial, put it in a safe way in this uh, box, which is just made specially to store dials and hands. And look at the state of the part. You see the dry up grid there. Wow! <laughs> look at when I push it up. There's the cannon pinion is full of uh, very hard grease, like green grease. So yeah, this watch was not serviced for for a long, long time probably. So like I said, you see these serial numbers uh, starting by 7. And if you look at it online, you will find that this watch is uh, dated from 1925. And I found that unbelievable to have like uh, such an old watch. Obviously, this one is still running. It's not running, but yeah, that would be the goal of this uh, video to make it run again. And uh, if you maintain your watch properly, yeah, like you can have watch working for like 100 years and more. Uh, a mechanical watch that's, that's beauty and that's what I love about these uh, mechanical watches and you can pass it on from generation to generation um, yeah that's uh, that's a nice nice touch and uh, like a lot of memories you can share with all these watches okay you see some of the parts like quite stuck there with like the the old grease so now we're gonna disassemble everything and we're gonna clean all these parts in my uh, vintage Alma cleaning machine which are specially made to clean uh, watch parts. Okay, we're just going to remove there the bridge and we have the barrel assembly there. We will disassemble that a bit later. And now we have the bridge with the train of wheel underneath. You can see the old Omega logo as well. I love the, the type of writing from this uh, Omega logo. Very beautiful. And you see the hand, are, like the wheel, sorry, are stuck to the pivot points. Again, probably like the dried up grease. And I hope that was the issue with the movement that prevented the movement from running because actually there's too much friction with the old grease and uh, the wheels are not turning anymore. So hopefully a good clean will do it because so far I don't see anything wrong on the movement. Like nothing is broken or nothing is wear down too much. Um, we still have the main spring to check if it's not broken. But you see even the yoke there with the yoke spring, everything looks okay quite dirty but it looks it looks good yeah there we go that's the last few parts we have and we are going to remove the jewels there that we're going to clean separately well, you see this is a very old watch so it doesn't have any shock protection uh, with the jewels because it's way way before it was invented so yeah and here I put this balance wheel and you see this balance wheel you see a couple of uh, gaps on the side of the balance wheels Actually, this balance wheel is uh, uh, temperature compensated. I will explain. I will explain a bit more a bit later how it works. But it means the watch can regulate itself, or it's more accurate if you want, 
uh, with a variation of temperature because the temperature has a huge effect on the, on the spring, like the air spring that you have in a balance. Uh, obviously, if it's cold or hot, uh, it will change the characteristic of the spring and it will change the characteristic as well of the timekeeping. So they find some tricks in the past and that's what's unbelievable as well to find like in the 20s and even before that, uh, they managed to produce and to invent this kind of uh, solution to, temper to, to have a temperature compensation on a balance wheel. It's unbelievable. Okay, so I just disassembled the barrel bridger and you can see the old spring that I will have to change because like this type of spring, which is like a snail a bit, like, yeah, that's very old. So we put a, a new spring, which is a bit more efficient in the, in the watch and to make sure that it is uh, full power cleaning the pivot there from a couple of wheels again, just to remove any uh, dried up oil or grease on the pivot point. And like I said, all the parts will go in these little baskets and this will go into my uh, cleaning machine just to make sure all the parts are fully clean without uh, the old grease and oil on the parts and without the, the dirt. And we put back everything together. So the cleaning is done in three stages. We will do the cleaning first, two stages of rinsing, and the last one will be uh, a drain. So I would like to use this opportunity to thank my patrons. So I have a patron page. If you want to go there and support the channel, that will help me uh, tremendously to put more contents online. Um, and I obviously have already uh, a lot of uh, patrons. So Christian, David, Shelby, Jan, Christian, Corne, Ellen, David, Ted, Tony, Michael, Stephen, John, Tim. I thank you so much and Gregory for supporting my channel. I will never imagine that we'll have so many people supporting me. So if you want to join, you will find a link in the description about my uh, Patreon page. You can go there and choose a plan to support the channel. And I will be really, really, really grateful uh, if you do it and it will help me to put better contents uh, later on. So the parts are now fully dry and uh, they will be ready to go back and to be uh, fully assembled again. Okay, so first, like I said, I will put a, a new mainspring because the uh, old one, yeah, it was an old style mainspring, so I just prefer to put a, a new one, which is, like I said, a bit more efficient. So I just press it inside the barrel. So it's, or, this mainspring come already lubricated, so you don't have to put any lubrication in a, in a barrel. And this is a T-shape. So you have like a bar that you need to align in a groove that's what I've done and I just put some oil there because the barrel arbor, you know, with the rotation, you, we are going to re-oil all the rotation and the contact points which are metal against metal just to make sure everything gets moved like smoothly between each other and don't wear too much. That's it. I'm closing the barrel assembly there. Okay, that's done. We can move to the rest now and you see that all the parts are fully clean. I store them by family, if you want, by category, because a lot of people ask me, how oh, do you know which parts are going together? And that's a way as well I like to organize my parts, I put them in a tray uh, by, uh, by uh, small groups, and uh, it makes it easier when you put it back together. I'm just disassembling, you see this beautiful balance again, wheel there, um, just to oil the jewel underneath, and to oil these jewels, I have to disassemble it, so I have to remove this two little, very, very, very small screws, like they are so tiny. And for this, yeah, again, I get access to this jewel. So we're gonna do first uh, epilim treatment on all the parts there, the jewels, the pallet fork, and the escape wheel. Well, now they're just uh, getting out of the epilim treatment, we're gonna dry them. Just remove the epilim from the pivot point of the escape and the pallet fork and we're gonna put back the jewel there on top of the part here. So it's uh, been treated with epilam and we are gonna oil it a bit later. We'll show you how I'm gonna oil this jewel. I'm just gonna use my automatic oiler, which I prefer to do on this type of, uh, of jewels. It's uh, much easier. So now the trick is to realign like the holes where, we see, where you can put these two little screws. So here is one. I'm gonna put the second one and just screw them together. You see how small they are, look at compared to my finger. And here is the oiling parts with the automatic oiler. There we go, just 
put a drop of oil there right in the center. And I'm going to do the same thing on this jewel as well. So I'm just going to put back the jewel. And from the other side, I'm just going to use my automatic oiler just to put a drop of oil right in the center of the jewel. There we go. Okay, you can see there as well on the bottom, you have the, the number of the caliber, which is a 26.5 SOD, I think. Um, yeah, that's a very, very old caliber from, uh, from Omega, obviously. Like I said, this watch from uh, 1925, uh, and it was produced, I think, uh, like way before as well. So they made a lot of this movement, like uh, in these uh, watches, which were like cushion case, that's the shape of the, of the case, like, uh, like a cushion. Um, yeah, they made a, a lot of this watch, like in the 20s, 30s, even 40s, and probably even before, like around the First uh, World War. Um, yeah, they were, I think, very popular uh, because yeah, it was actually probably like a few because people before like was wearing pocket watches. So that was like one of the few, if you want, or the few like uh, uh, like decades where people were wearing a lot of uh, wristwatch. Uh, before they were wearing a lot of pocket watch so yeah that was quite a, a big change in the watch industry and as well in a in a fashion if you if you went before were switching from pocket watch to to wristwatch um so i think yeah they sold a lot of uh, a lot of these watches okay so i put now all the parts we put a barrel back and now we're putting the plate on top there the bridge putting the screws to secure the bridge in place. And again, we're gonna re-oil all the points, putting the click spring there, which is pretty special. This, this click spring actually is very easy. Normally they are a lot more complex and it does the job, yeah? So you, uh, yeah, that's the way to do it and uh, it works fine. You go, the ratchet wheel is in place and now we're gonna put the crown wheel with the screw which is in the middle, which means it's reverse threaded. You see, I'm unscrewing it to screw it actually. And now we're moving to the dial side where we're gonna assemble the keyless work, which is pretty standard on this watch. And here you see me putting some grease with uh, high viscosity because these parts are going to see a lot of friction between each other. And the setting levers that I'm gonna screw from the other side with this screw there. It's always a, a tricky part to do. Okay, you see, see me replicating like all the pivot points for the yogs, the minute wheel a bit later on. Gonna put the yog spring here, which is a very strong spring in a watch, so you, you need to be really careful. And you see I'm keeping in place with this plastic stick and putting it in with my tweezers. The cannon pinion, which is friction mounted so you need to click in place and we are oiling all the jewels from the train of wheel and putting the last few parts with the minute wheel and the setting lever spring that will come on top and cover all these parts and we're gonna secure it with these two little screws okay and you can see the movement after the cleaning as well Obviously, this one is quite uh, worn, but much cleaner than uh, than than before. Obviously, that's the purpose of the service to have all the parts clean and uh, fully oiled and ready. And you see that the two position of the crown, yeah, that's working perfect. Gonna oil the jewels. Sorry for the pivot point on uh, this side as well of the movement on the balance side. And I'm gonna put back the pallet fork that I'm gonna oil as well. I'm always oiling, so it's quite tricky to put it on camera, but I'm always oiling because people say, oh, you don't oil the pallet fork. Obviously, yes, I oil the existence of the pallet fork every time, but uh, pretty tricky to, to put it on, uh, on camera. Okay, I'm putting a bit of a wine and we're gonna check if the power is coming to the pallet fork. If it's click, Yes, it does. Perfect. So now after oiling the pallet fork, I will be able to put the balance, but first we need to put it back together. And actually this balance wheel, 
is uh, like I said, temperature compensated. So you see like you have two uh, gaps uh, on each side and uh, you have two kinds of metal on the balance wheel. You see you will have a gold metal on, uh, on the axe outside and like a steel metal in the inside. And that allows like with the temperature, the diameter of the wheel will change. Uh, that's quite unbelievable. And uh, because if you want, like when it's hot, the, the spring will get weak a bit because it will get softer. So the balance wheel, the diameter of the balance wheel will reduce. So it makes the balance wheel spin faster to count, like to counterweight basically the weakness in uh, in air spring. And it will be exactly the opposite when it's cold. So when it's cold, the spring will get a bit stronger. So the balance the balance wheel will uh, will have yeah a bit more strength. So for that, the diameter will increase with the with the cold. Uh, so we'll make it uh, rotate a, li a, a less faster. So yeah, that's quite unbelievable to think like how, we, how they found and how, the, how did they produce this. Uh, the result is not good and we'll see later a bit how we can improve that. But first we're gonna focus on the case and put it in a silver cleaning solution just to remove the oxidation on top and uh, have like a cleaner look to the dial. I just don't want to polish it because I want to keep it like this original look. Don't want to have uh, this watch looking like, like new. I'm gonna fit, you remember the crystal, it was yellow and uh, and cracked and not good. So I'm gonna uh, fit a new crystal. So for this, I'm gonna use my uh, version uh, press uh, fit tool. So just gonna compress the crystal that I'm just centering in it right now. Now I'm compressing the crystal, so the diameter become just a tiny bit smaller. And this will allow me to bring the case there and it will fit in a groove of, of the case. There, there we go. And now I'm, I'm gonna release the tension and the crystal will expand in a groove and that is, is trapped now, is in the case, is installed. And you see the problem is a bit error. The bit error is really high, uh, 6.9, 7.2, so before, adjusting the rate, I'm going to adjust the bit error. And for this, I need to check, uh, I need to adjust it manually. I need to check, you see the pallet fork there is hanging on one side, it's not, it's not perfectly straight. So I'm, to change that, it's quite tricky. I have to disassemble the balance wheel. You can see there's the two uh, metals that I was talking on the, on the ring. And uh, I'm going to change the angle of the collet there of the air spring just to make sure that the impulse joules is aligned perfectly with the pallet fork. And you see me there, I use a screwdriver just to just ever so slightly twist the pallet, the, the, the collet there from the air spring. And uh, I'm gonna uh, now assemble it back and put it back on movement and we will see the result at the end of the accuracy of this watch where we manage. And on, on a manual watch like that, where you can adjust the bit error, my goal is to have it below one it's always very tricky to have it bang on on zero. Obviously, um, it's much easier when you have a watch where you can adjust it on top, but this type of adjustment is quite tricky. So when it's one below one millisecond, I'm more than happy. Okay, I'm just gonna do a quick clean on a, on a dial, just a very gentle clean, just to remove any dirt on it or any uh, marks, but obviously I'm not going to go to town about it because I just don't want to damage the dial. So yeah, just a, a quick rinse on top with a cotton swab and some uh, special solution just to clean the dial. And you see it become a bit, a bit lighter, a bit cleaner. That's it. I just don't want to do more about it because yeah, obviously you run the risk of damaging this uh, dial, which is almost 100 years old and uh, you don't want to do that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put now the last uh, couple of parts with our wheel and the springs and go on top of it. Just gonna fit the newly clean dial now. When it's in place, I'm just gonna put the screw and screw it in place just to make sure it stays. I'm just gonna do a gentle polish as well on the hand. So they are blue the hand, but a uh, tiny bit of uh, oxidation on top, I, I want to keep them as original. So again, I'm just gonna do a gentle polish on the hands and you will see the difference between uh, one hand, which uh, that's our hand that I'm polishing right now and the minute hand. I'm gonna do the same as well. Look at the difference, you see? The other one is much more blue it's, uh, and the, the minute hand was like a bit dull. So 
just gonna again just do a gentle polish on the minute end there gonna do the same on the sub second end as well which is made of uh, it's not blue this one is gold and uh, we're gonna reinstall the hand so first our hand gonna align it to midnight and there we figured out that look at the logo it's not aligned at all to the to the 12 position i did not see actually uh, and now and when i try to align everything i guess yeah maybe before in a in a production like uh quality control or uh, was not as uh, tight as now or maybe they were in a rush or producing a lot of these watches so yeah and again the hands perfectly aligned there so that's that's good and the sub second hand on this uh, small sub counter there just fitting in place with this Orotech tool which is very nice to fit uh, the hands and I have my own website, so if you want to send me your watch, uh, I can. Uh, you can go on the website there. There is a section uh, where you can buy watch that I restore. So that's a section where you can buy uh, watches that have been restored on the channel. And as well, I have a section where you can go and uh, ask more about uh, servicing your watch. And actually, the watch I'm doing now is somebody that contacted me on a, on a website. So you can go there, and um, I will uh, we'll talk about it and uh, see if we can uh, fix your watch. Uh, yeah, I would be more than happy to, to help you, yeah. Okay, I'm just putting back the movement and the dial in the case, in a clean case. Just going to fit the winding stem there. Just make sure everything is aligned perfectly. And look with this beautiful new crystal there. Wow, the, the huge difference already. Fitting the screws, I will keep the movement nice and secure in the case. And you see the movement is running very, very nicely. And fitting the case back, which gonna snap on together the front and the back. And here is the result. You see the bit error 0 0.4. I'm very happy with this type of uh, bit error on this type of watch. Amplitude is very good, above 300. And the watch is gaining few seconds per day. And it's unbelievable to think a watch which is almost 100 years old is running so good after just a, a service, a good clean, uh, a good setting. Yeah, that's uh, unbelievable. And look at this beauty. I really enjoy working on this uh, vintage Omega. I hope you like this restoration and I see you for my next project. Bye bye.